All right, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to calculate some of these uh, things. We're not going to do range. We're not going to do mode. Um, but I will tell you just mode is uh, the amount of points that are the most. So in this case, the mode would be three because there's four threes, and that's the data point that's represented the most. And then range is simple because you just take your highest value, which would be six here, minus your lowest value, which would be zero. That's how you find the range. So we're not going to do those. Those are, are quite simple. We're going to focus on median, mean, IQR, and standard deviation. Now, in order to do the median, what we need to do is we need to rearrange all of these numbers from least to greatest. So the lowest number is zero. The next lowest number is one but I have three of those ones, so I need to write them down three times. The next number is two. The next number is three, and I have four of those threes. The next number is four, and the next number is six. All right, so we're gonna start by finding the median. So we start at the two outer ones, and we work our way in, so the zero and the six, now I'm gonna move on to the one and the four. Next, I'm gonna move on to the one and the three. Next, the one and the other three. Next, the two and the three. And then now, I wind up with my median being in between this two and three. When your median is in between two numbers, then what you do is you take the average of those two numbers. So I add those two numbers together, two and three, and since uh, there's only two values, taking the average, I just divide by two. So I wind up with my median being a 2.5, which means my median is halfway in between this two and this three, so right here. All right, I always like to draw this line because it's gonna help when we do the IQR. All right, now the mean. Remember the little U-shaped looking symbol is the uh, population mean, and the X bar is the sample mean. The population and sample mean are exactly the same value. So how we do this is we add up our numbers, and I don't need to write the one three times instead, since there's three ones, I can do a three times a one, and I don't need to write the two two times, instead I can do a two times a two, that's the same thing. Plus, and I don't have to write the three four times. Instead, I can do a four times a three. And then plus a four and plus a six. And then we take that sum and we divide it by how many numbers there are in this data set, which are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 11, 12. All right. So I'm going to do the sum first, so in my calculator I'm going to do a 0 plus a 3 times a 1 plus a 2 times a 2 plus a 4 times a 3 plus a 4 plus a 6, and that sum comes out to be 29. So I'm going to take that 29 and now I'm going to divide it by 12. And it does say to round to the nearest tenth if necessary, my mean is 2.4. And it's the same for the population and for the sample mean. All right, now, IQR. What we do is we take the average of my first half of my data. So my first half of my data are the data points that lie to the left of my red median. So that red line that tells me that, all right, now this splits that data exactly in half. And then the quartile three is going to be dealing with the median of the second half. So I'm finding my quartile one value now, which is the median of my first half. So I start with my two outer points on my first half of my data, and I work my way in. And it looks like my quartile one is going to be in between the numbers one and one, which means that it's just one. And then the median of my second half of my data, I start at the outer two, I work my way in. The quartile three is going to be the median between three and three, which is just three. Now my inner quartile range is going to be my quartile three value minus my quartile one value, so it comes out to be two. 
All right. Standard deviation is the tough one. All right. What we do with standard deviation is we're going to use our mean. All right. And if you need to refer back to the steps on this page here, because I had you write out the steps, you can. But you will need to know this process without your notes, so it might be a good idea to practice without it. So step one, what we do is we take each of these values and we subtract our mean. So I'm going to do 0 minus 2.4. I'm going to do 1 minus my mean, which is 2.4. And since there's three of those ones, I don't need to do that three times. I could just multiply by three after I'm done. And then I do the next data point, 2 minus 2.4. And since there's two twos, I'm going to multiply that by two. The next data point is three, so I'm going to do three minus 2.4. And since there's four threes, I'm going to do that. I'm going to multiply that by four. And then my next data point is four, and I only have one of those, so four minus 2.4. And the next data point is six. Now, we don't just subtract the mean. After we subtract the mean, we square the difference. All right, so we're going to do that now. All right, a 0 minus a 2.4 is a negative 2.4. A negative 2.4 squared in my calculator comes out to be a 5.76. Now I do a 1 minus a 2.4, which comes out to be a negative 1.4. Squaring that number, I get a 1.96, but then I'm going to need to multiply that by 3 because there were three ones in this data set. Now a 2 minus a 2.4 is a negative 0.4. When I square that, I get a 0.16, but since I had two twos, I need to multiply that 0.16 by 2. Now a 3 minus a 2.4 is a positive 0.6. We're going to square that. That's a 0 .0, or sorry, a 0.36. And since I had four threes, I'm going to multiply that by four. A four minus a 2.4 is a 1.6. When I square a 1.6, I get a 2.56. And then a six minus a 2.4 comes out to be a 3.6. Now what we do is we take the average of these values here. So I'm going to add all these up. So my sum comes out to be a 5.76 plus a 3 times a 1.96 plus a 2 times a 0.16 plus a 4 times a 0.36 plus a 2.56 plus a 3.6. I wind up with a sum of 195.6. So that's my sum. To get the population, I'm going to do my sum which is 195.6 divided by how many points I had, which I don't need to recount because over when I did the mean, I knew that there were 12 points. So I'm going to do 195.6 divided by 12. And then whatever that number is, I take the square root of that. So 195.6 divided by 12 and then that's a 16.3, so I take the square root of 16.3, and I round to the nearest tenth, which is just a 4.0. Now for sample, I do my 195.6. This time I'm not going to divide by 12, I'm going to divide by 1 less, which is 11, and then I take the square root. So 195.6 divided by 11 is a long decimal, but I'll take the square root of that, and I wind up with my sample standard deviation to be a 4.2. Now, when we are doing these problems, I will not always tell you that it's population or sample. You won't always do them twice. 
Now, if you're reading a word problem, you yourself need to figure out whether we want the population standard deviation or the sample standard deviation. I will not tell you. But since I'm just giving you a data set, that is why I'm just having you find both. All right, because there is no word problem attached. So we cannot identify whether we want population or sample. All right, moving on to the next problem here. I'm actually gonna skip over number two and I'll have you try that one by yourself. Let's move on to number three, because this one's slightly different. First, we need to rearrange our values. So five, five, seven, 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 eight, eight, ten, ten. If I asked you for the mode, it would be seven, all right? If I asked you for the range, you do 10 minus five, it would be five, but I'm not asking you that. Let's find the median. Start with the outer two, then work your way in. Now, the reason why I did it, I did this one instead of the other one is because we actually found a median value, whereas in number two, you're going to wind up in between two numbers like we did in number one. So I wanted to show you this one here. Let's do the mean. So the mean, remember, I just add up all my numbers. So a two times a five, I don't have to write that twice plus a three times a seven, plus a two times an eight, plus a two times a 10. And I'm gonna divide by, since there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I'm gonna divide by nine. So I have a two times a five, plus a three times a seven, plus a two times an eight, plus a two times a 10, that's a 67, divided by nine, and we're gonna to round to the nearest tenth, so that's gonna be 7.4. Remember, sample mean and population mean are exactly the same. Now, interquartile range. The first half of your data, you do not include the median if you have a direct median. So like in number one, we didn't have a direct median, so my first half was just to the left to the red of the red line. Over here, it's to the left of the median. And my second half of my data is to the right of the median. So my quartile one is in between five and seven. The number that's directly in between five and seven is six. So my quartile one is six. My quartile three is the number in between eight and 10. And so the number directly in between an eight and a 10 is a nine. And so my inner quartile range is my quartile three minus my quartile one. So I wind up with my IQR being three. Now, standard deviation, remember, we are going to do 5 minus my mean. And since there's two 5s, I'm going to multiply that by 2, but I need to square that 5 minus 7 by 0.4. Now I'm going to do the next data point, which is 7. 7 minus my mean squared. And since there's three 7s, I'm going to multiply that by 3. My next data point is eight, so I do eight minus a 7.4. And since there's two eights, I'm gonna just multiply that by two. And then my only other data point is 10. And since there's two uh, tens, I'm gonna multiply that by two. All right, so five minus a 7.4, and squaring that number, I get a 5.76. So I want a two times a 5.76. 7 minus 7.4, and then squaring that number, I get a 0 point, sorry, a 0 0.16. So I multiply that by 3 because there's three sevens. 8 minus 7.4 squared, I get a 0 0.36. 3 And 10 minus 7.4 squared, I get a 6.76. Now we take the average, so I'm gonna add all these up because that's part of the average. And I take for population, I take my sum and I divide by nine because there's nine data values. And then I take the square root, so I get my population to be about 1.7. Whereas my sample, I do the sum of 26.24, but I divide by eight, one less than nine, and then I take the square root and I get about 1.8. So they're close, but they're not exact. 
Now I'm going to have you do number two all on your own. All right, and here's what you get for number two.